and Nightingale players have the unique ability to create an extensive variety of weapons and clothing, offering thousands of color and design combinations. This feature allows for customization of guns, melee weapons, and apparel, enabling players to give their characters a distinct look that reflects their personal style. The game emphasizes the depth of its crafting system, where one can master craft items with intricate designs and a broad palette of colors, presenting a universe of possibilities for personalization and aesthetic expression. And we are going to explore this system because it is vast and there's many things for us to learn and understand. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we have a Porter Pistol combined with Pursuit and an ADR, giving it this beautiful purplish green color. And here we have a Druidic Jacket made from Galump, which adds a very unique splash of orange at the front of the jacket, as well as quite significant splashes at the back. Very unique look here. And then if we have a look and compare it to a Druidic Jacket comprised of Jhana, you'll see a stark difference of tones and colors flashing from green and white to a more darker orange green. So two very different looking clothing pieces. And this is just a fraction of examples that are existing in this game. Some materials will have more or less impact in terms of colors, but there's a large portion that offer some very promising results and there's lots to mix and match. And this is all purely on the aesthetic side, because if you do want to build some of the best weapons, you may not opt in to have a, a more aesthetically a pleasing weapon, melee weapon or clothing. But for those that want to explore and understand a bit of how the coloring system works in Nightingale, this is going to be a good place to start. I'm going to split this into two parts. This first part, we're just going to be focusing on ingots and how that's going to impact the colors of your rifles, pistols, melee weapons, tools, so that you can have an understanding of what are the defining factors and what you need to know if you're looking to create a more aesthetic pleasing weapon that will make you look cool and get all the girls, all of them, none were spared. Look at my big hammer. Woo! So let's commence part one where we hone in on the ingots. So let's find out what the foundational colors will be for your ingots. This means I've crafted the Lee Metford rifle in nearly every material that turns into ingot and crafted it only using that ingot to give it its base color. So this only accounts for weapons being entirely built out of one material. This is the color you will get. We're going to have a look at all the different ingots in the Lee Metford rifle form and have a look at their colors. Then we're going to mix and match some of the colors so you get an idea of how the gun has segregated parts that can be different colors. What's important to understand is that these colors will reflect on everything you craft, whether it be axes, clothing, hammers. These foundational colors from these materials will radiate and permeate into everything we craft. So this is a good place to understand some of the foundational colors and how that's going to interact with everything we craft. Okay, let's begin. Classic disconnect. So we're going to do this in alphabetical order. So starting with the advanced hollow metal. Do note, I won't cover the non-advanced metals as they have the same color. So let's start off with the advanced hollow metal. The advanced hollow metal has a very nice color. Now, I'm not a color expert. I don't know what these colors are exactly. So if you do, you can let me know in the comments. We can update the timestamps to make them uh, official colors. But this will just give you an idea. Very cool sort of rustic purplish sort of look. We'll go on to advanced Lachnas. That also shares a very similar color color. These are bound ingots, so they do have a lot of shared similarities. Next, we'll try the Bombardier. This has a bit more of a distinct color. It's sort of a edging on very close to a silverish sort of look. Let's have a look at the brass. A very nice sort of <laughs> brassy color here. Definitely like the look of this, especially how it catches the sun. Very bright. Okay, let's have a look at the bronze. And as you expect, a bit more of a bronzy color. It does look very similar to the bound, so it will be a bit hard to distinguish when people have crafted their weapons out of something like bronze have a look at cobalt. Cobalt has a very silver look, probably look quite similar to some other weapons. So it'll be another one that will be a bit harder to distinguish. Next we have Anadia. Now, I love the color of Anadia. It's a, sort of a lightish pinkish purple color. One of the better looking sort of colors that we have. Very distinctive. There's a few others that look kind of similar to it, but this is much more of a distinct ingot color. Next we'll have a look at the Sun Giant. Sun Giant, as you would expect, has quite a yellow look to it. Very goldish, yellowish, but a very nice overall tone and color. And this will go very nice on a lot of materials. Next, we have iron. Again, very similar look to your silvers and some of the other ingots. Not very distinctive, but it gives you an idea of what you would expect. Now, we did miss gold, so we'll chuck gold in. And as you expect, gold has a very nice similar color to the sun, sun god. Nice gold color. Next, we have a look at chirosiphon, another bound ingot. Very similar color to the other bound ingots. Next, we have a look at magnesium. Magnesium offering quite a silver look again, so not too distinct from some of the other ones. Take a quick look at nickel. I imagine will be a bit more of a darker silver. 
silver look to compared to magnesium, but quite similar. Next, we'll have a look at pellucidic. The pellucidic has a less strong kind of gold yellowish sort of look, still very nice. Next, we'll check platinum. Platinum having quite the silver look to it as well. Then we have pursuit. So one of the few that has much more of a greenish kind of tint to it, a bit more distinct, and it becomes very distinct on certain items, but definitely one of the favorites for your ranged weapons. Next, we'll check out shimmering. Shimmering, I was expecting it to be a bit more shimmering, I guess, but it is sort of a very lightish sort of purple brownish i'd say still quite nice next we have silver so i'm expecting silver to be very silver because we've had a lot of different silver looking guns yeah so very similar to many of the other ones if not the same that's silver for you steel is next looking quite similar to very to a few other ones that we've had a look at next we have the bishop so bishop having a goldish sort of look to it quite nice next we have the knight so the knight came up looking quite silver next we have the rook rook off is the uh, gold color next we have titan's fingernail so titan's fingernail has a very distinct look as well being a tier 5 you can really tell the difference pretty sure it's pretty much its own unique color definitely like the look of titan's fingernail and last we have titanium titanium offering quite a silverish look so that's not the last one i forgot a couple so here we have the copper a very nice copper look <laughs> it's uh very similar to some of the other ones and i also forgot arium and here it is another silver looking one it is a little bit disappointing i guess it's only early release so we may not have all the different colors and there may be more colors for each ingot type coming currently we do have a lot of crossover but i'm sure this will change but at least this gives us a rough idea of where it's at right now so these are all the different colors of your ingots now what we're going to do is we're going to mix and match a few just so you get an idea of how the guns and weapons will look like when you do incorporate mixtures of the different ingots because as you would expect it can offer quite a unique spin on many of the color palettes that we have for our ingots and the weapons we correct Okay, so next we're just going to play around with four materials. We got Anadia, Fabled Sun Giant, Pursuit, and Titan's Fingernail. Now we're going to mix and match these and see what kind of color results we get from applying the different ingot components when crafting a Lee Metford rifle. Let's have a look. Okay, so for starters, let's go Anadia Barrel. We'll go a metal plate of Pursuit. We'll go a stock. All of them will have the same stock, just some tier four swamp wood and refined action. We'll go Titan's Fingernail. So we've got three different components. It'll be interesting to see which one will take priority over the overall look. Let's craft this. This is a very much a mixed match. We're not worried about the stats or anything. We're just going to throw these together, see what colors we get. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we've got some clear evidence of the pursuit being green on multiple places. So we can see that coming through. We can see the Anadia definitely coming through for the most part on the barrel. But the Tiger's fingernail, which has more of a yellowish sort of look from memory, this does it doesn't seem to be be coming true so let's try again and this time we'll make the barrel tiger's fingernail and see what we come up with but it does give us some indication on where this color will be separated depending on what we use so it looks for the most part it's the barrel will be the main component that will change the color but let's find out so last time we used an ADR. we're going to use a titan's fingernail for the metal plate we used pursuit last time so this time let's use an ADR and we'll see if that color changes the stock is wood so it doesn't really matter now the refined action this might be the part that doesn't seem to matter too much in terms of color so let's go the failed sun giant so it should be a distinctive goldish yellow color if there is any traces of that then we know the refined action has some sort of overhead in the overall color scheme let's have a look we'll craft it okay now we can see that the tiger's fingernail has definitely come through as the major color so it does look like the barrel is going to be the predominant factor when deciding on what color you'd like to make your weapon now we can definitely see that the nadia has come through as the other little bits of pieces that have colored we don't see any trace of pursuit but we can clearly see the two main colors are coming from the barrel and the metal plate so that's pretty interesting so it looks like for guns we get at least on this particular lee metford rifle it looking like it's just the two colors and i'm guessing that's going to be pretty much the same for all guns it's going to be a two color palette that we can sort of mess around with because from playing around with the pistols it's a similar sort of thing but where it gets more impressive of seeing the different colors is definitely something like the portal pistol when you mix those colors on that gun it's a very cool beautiful looking gun i assume it will be the same with the lanchester pistol and same with the webley revolver whereas the other guns will just have the two tone colors but it'll be less noticeable because the primary color pretty much takes over the whole barrel and the refined action so that kind of covers your rifles shotguns and pistols your barrel is going to be your primary color and then all the other little bits and pieces that are most likely for the rifles just going to be the bolts and little bits 
will be colored in whatever you select as the plate. But you can see when it comes to pistols, they have a much more defined and more balanced out of the different colors, at least with the Porter pistol, because it has such a different cylinder. But we can still see that the barrel being the pursuit is the primary color, whereas the cylinder, which will be, which I assumed will be the filigree, will be what will change the colors. We'll just give this a quick test. Okay, so we've got all the materials we need for the Porter pistol. So we'll give it a test. We'll make barrel, Nadia. We'll make the filigree pursuit, the handle will go in Adia and the refined action will go pursuit and we'll see what we come up with there we go so that's recreated the exact same color scheme as the previous weapon we'll have in a look at so for the portal pistol it looks like the barrel is the Nadia, which is all of this part here and then the filigree is all the pursuit that we used so let's try this one more time just so we can dr drive this home it does look like the first two ingredients to the weapons is going to be the driving factor for the color scheme okay this time we'll switch it around we'll put pursuit and then we'll put Put filigree is an Adia. Forge handle will go in Adia. The refined action will go in Adia as well. So there you go. So we've used pursuit for the barrel, and that's the primary color. And then an Adia for the other component. And it's an exact switch from the previous gun when we used an Adia. So it does seem like it's a two color system for the rifles and weapons. And it does look like it's going to be the top two materials required for the weapon are going to be what is the main driving factor for your color and the results. The exact same rules apply to your military weapons so we have an advanced luckiness its base color will be the same base color as shown previously and then we change it to pursuit green as expected Hellucidic, the goldish sort of color we're expecting so now we'll quickly just do an example of mix and matching on a melee weapon just to give you an idea it's going to follow the same sort of principle i assume the first two ingredients will dictate the overall two color palette that we have but just before we do that i just wanted to let you know so when you have to mix alloys and precious metals in this example i have some advanced luckiness and i've used a few different of the alloys it, do, it won't change it won't actually change any of the uh color schemes between the different alloys and i believe that is the same for precious metals so just so you know when you have to add in other ingots of different alloys or precious metals it should not change the color of your expected item okay so we're going to craft some dauntless pickaxes and we're going to switch around the materials we get an understanding of how the color breakdown is going to happen on melee weapons i assume it's going to follow the same path as rifles and pistols the top two will be the main determination of its overall color. So for this, we will go Pursuit as the hardened pickhead, then we'll go Inadia for the pickhead, and the forged handle will go Inadia. Now again, this is an example you wouldn't necessarily craft a dauntless axe picks out of these materials, but we are highlighting how melee weapons will be colored. So this is where it gets pretty cool. So, so I've gone ahead and crafted the two different dauntless axe picks, and we can see here that the hardened pickaxe head will determine the axe and pick part between the two. So the first example we used an Adia, the second example we used Pursuit. Now it looks like the pick head and the forged handle are exactly that. Now we'll do one more example where we add in a third ingredient to see if the forged handle comes in into color for this particular weapon. So for this example, we use a hardened pickhead as pursuit, the pickhead as an Adia, and the forged handle will use the fabled sun giant. So we'll know it will be gold, so it will stand out. If it isn't a golden handle, then we know it's only a two color palette for melee weapons and it's only considering the first two materials. Okay, so we've crafted the Fable Sun Gold version and we're switching between all three and you can see here that it is only top two materials that actually matter that will change the color. The forge handle does not impact the color. So we can say with some certainty that for melee weapons, again, it's a two color palette. The first two materials you use will determine what color the main components will be. So I hope this gives everyone a pretty Pretty clear idea of how the color scheme and how to color your weapons using the various different ingots. I'd like to do the same with clothing. That's obviously a much bigger topic as there's so many different resources to use for clothing. So if you got anything out of this, consider liking, subscribing, and definitely check out part two where we cover some of the clothing. Thanks very much. Catch you next time.